Hey, my name is Mike. I'm an AI enablement engineer here at Batovi. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how we can integrate GitHub Copilot into apps like Figma and Jira. Specifically, we're gonna take a look at how Copilot can complete a Jira ticket from scratch in one shot. The first thing I wanna show you is the app that we're gonna be implementing the feature on. So over here, I have this app called Task Flow, and it just allows you to keep track of simple tasks. You can see there's like a Kanban board, there's area for teams, and then there's also analytics. So this is a pretty complex app. And then over here, I have the Jira ticket that we want Copilot to implement. It's called User10. And basically the idea is that we're gonna save the first and the last name of the user in a form. You can see over here, we even have links to this Figma document, which has all the different designs for what this should look like. So Copilot's gonna be able to look through all of these designs, including all these different states like submitting or if there's an error, and it'll be able to implement that into our code base. Also down here, you can see we have an attachment. This is just an image. Copilot's also gonna be able to look through these different images and use them in order to inform what it does. Now, one of the things we've been working on at Batovi are these sort of magic prompts. And over here, I have one of them. This is a two line prompt. And just from this, if I paste it into Copilot and then add in the ticket number, I'll be able to have Copilot implement and do this entire issue for me by itself. So let's hit enter and see what happens. You can see over here, Copilot starting to work. Now it's gonna go out to Jira and grab the issue. You'll see here it finds that those Figma links were there, so it's gonna go ahead and list all of those out. Now what it's doing is it's reaching out to Figma and it's getting the code for all of these different features. So you can see here we have the HTML and the CSS. This is exactly what Copilot needs to be able to implement this feature. Now it's going off and getting all of those attachments. And finally, now it's gonna read through our code and it'll figure out exactly how it needs to integrate all of this in. All right, so GitHub Copilot finished up. Now let's head back over to the app to see if it implemented everything correctly. You can see over here, we have this user details page. And then here, if I add in my name, it should say submitting, and then it should give me a success message. There we go. Thank you, your details have been submitted successfully. So just with two lines of a prompt and adding in the ticket number, I was able to have GitHub Copilot do this for me in about two minutes. Now let me show you how it all works and how it all fits together. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and keep these changes. And then I'm gonna show you all the things that I did to configure this app so that Copilot was able to do that for me. The first thing I wanna show you is up here in my code base, which is this .github folder. And in here I have a file called Copilot Instructions. This is a file that you can add into your code base, which will tell GitHub Copilot exactly what's going on in your app. So you can see over here, I have like the technology stack with all the different languages and frameworks, how the files are organized, the architecture, and then even some build instructions. This is context that Copilot will use so that it can integrate code better into your app. Now, Batovi, we've created a prompt chain which automatically generates this for you. In other words, the AI goes through, analyzes your code base, and generates this for you. And I'm going to leave a link to that in the description below. But once you have your Copilot instructions set up, the next thing we need to do is set up the model context protocol, or MCP. Now, MCP is what allows GitHub to be able to connect with services like Jira, Figma, or even your own custom service. So what GitHub's doing is it's going off to Jira using this model context protocol. It's able to read through the entire issue. Then it can go off to Figma and get the code for all of those different designs. And then at Batobi, we've actually created our own MCP server, which allows us to get attachments from Jira, which they don't currently support. So I'm gonna show you how to set those up in VS Code. What you wanna do is head over to this website. I'll put a link in the description below. It has all sorts of common MCP servers for agent mode. So down here, we have one for Figma. We also have one for Atlassian. Now I can install one by just clicking install, opening VS Code, and then installing the server. Now what this will do is it'll create a configuration for me in my settings.json file. If you're using Figma, you'll notice that it points to a local host address. You're gonna have to open the Figma app, go up here to this F, come down to preferences, and then click enable dev mode MCP server. You're also gonna need to have Figma dev mode enabled. So once we've enabled this Figma MCP server, then we're gonna do the same thing for Atlassian. You can just come here, open Visual Studio Code and install it. You'll see here it adds this configuration. Now, one thing you need to be aware of with the Atlassian server is that it doesn't support attachments. So in our ticket, you can see we have this image attached right here. So the Atlassian server doesn't support that. So what we're gonna to need to do is add in a custom server that we built here at Batovi, which is called the Jira MCP auth bridge. So I'm gonna put a link to this in the description, but you can just copy this, 
And actually, instead of putting this in our settings file, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new folder in here called VS Code. And then I'm going to come down here to mcp.json and I'm going to put it right here. Now I'll show you how to set this up. There's this button down here called add server. Click on this, go to HTTP, enter this in, and then we're going to call this Batovi Jira MCP. So that's going to add this in. And like I said, this will allow us to get attachments from any of our tickets that we have on Jira. So once the MCPs are set up, now what we can do is add in our special prompt. So you'll notice that I had a prompt up here that was only two lines. What it's doing is it's opening a repository on GitHub and then it's executing the prompt. So the prompt is over here and here I'm in this AI enablement prompts repository. And then down here we come to writing code generate feature. So the actual prompt is in this generate feature dot markdown file. You can see here it's a copilot prompt to implement end to end Jira ticket automation. So it just lists out a number of steps which we can take in order for Copilot to be able to implement this stuff. So the first is we retrieve the ticket number, parse the ticket contents, gather supplementary information, synthesize, and then implement the ticket logic. So what we can do here is we can tell GitHub Copilot to go out to that repository, grab that prompt, and then execute it. So I'm gonna copy these two lines down here, and then all we need to do is put in the ticket number, and then GitHub Copilot's gonna go off and do all of that stuff. So now you can see how by connecting with these model context protocol servers, GitHub Copilot's able to go out and get all the information from the Jira ticket, then it gets the Figma links, it can go out to Figma, and then it can go out to the Batovi server in order to get all the attachments. It then combines them together, and then using this instructions.md file, it's able to add code into the code base that actually fits and makes sense. And then what we're left with at the end is our finished task, and a thank you and everything's been done successfully. So that's gonna do it for me. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe. If you'd like to be able to integrate some of this into your own workflow, feel free to contact Batovi. We're always looking to upskill teams and help out any companies that need it. Otherwise, keep innovating.